Hey guys. Okay, so Council is currently in the process of overhauling the entire way that they present and publish their flood information to make it easier for people to digest and understand so that they can make better decisions when it comes to building projects going forward. Now, the first of these changes dropped this week. We now have a new Floodwise property report. So I thought, hey, why don't I use this week's video to introduce you to that new report so that when you see one of these new reports, you're not caught off guard and you know how to navigate your way around it. So let's jump behind the computer and let's do this. Okay, so before we dive into the fresh, hip, new Floodwise property report, I thought I'd take a moment just to refresh your memory as to what the old school Floodwise property report looked like. So what we were dealing with literally just last week. So the example I've got open here in front of me is one that I've taken from an assessment report that I was drafting literally just last week. So as you can see here, we've got the 1%, 2%, 5%, and 20% AEP levels. AEP stands for Annual Exceedance Probability. So in super simple terms, there is a 1% chance, when I'm looking at this example here, 1% chance each and every year that a flood will occur that reaches a level of 5.2 meters. Now that 5.2 meters is AHD, Australian Height Datum, or in super simple terms, sea level. So basically the water gets to 5.2 meters, in theory, above sea level, each time you have a 1% flood event occurring on this property, as opposed to a 3.9 meter level in a 20% flood event. Obviously 20% has a higher chance of occurring than 1%, you get the idea. We also have the January 2011 historical flood information, the DFL, and the contours on the property. So this information suggests that if you were standing on the lowest portion or lowest part of the property, you would be standing on ground that is 2.2 meters above sea level, again AHD, and if you were standing on the highest part of the property, you'd be 4.2 meters above sea level. So there is a two meter fall across the entire property. Now, looking at this report, I was pretty happy with that. Like, I thought that was a good amount of information. Yeah, see, then they dropped the new Floodwise report, blah, blah, get my words out, property report, and I realized, nah, we can do better. Boom. <laughs> so obviously the first thing that jumps out at you is the fact that we now have more historical data. We now have the levels from the February event this year. Yep, quite a big jump up between those two flood events. We also now have a estimated or theoretical floor level for the existing house. Now it blows my mind to think about how they possibly collected this data. Like my first thought was, okay, did they go through historical DAs? Well, no, I know this property doesn't have a historical DA, so they couldn't have done that. So did they send cars? I, like, I just can't get my head around it, but however they did it, hats off to them. I love this information, because it gives us a bit more information to process when we're trying to work out, okay, how far does the house need to come off the ground? All of that sort of stuff. Now, we also still have the old ground levels. Yes, you will know this has changed ever so slightly from that previous example I showed you. Same property, but the previous example, previous Floodwires property report had 2.2 to 4.2. There'll be slight variations as data's updated over time. But instead of being just a single line off to the side, it is now a bar across, which makes it a lot easier to compare and analyze the information. So for example, what I'm seeing here is in a 20% flood event, so again, an event, a flood event that has a 20% chance of occurring each and every year, which is relatively frequent, if you're standing on the bottom of the property, 2.3 meters is where you're standing, that goes up to 3.9, that's 1.6 meters difference. Check my calculations, yes, that's correct. <laughs> so you'd basically be standing in 1.6 meters of water if you were standing at the bottom of the property. However, if you were standing on the top of the property up at the 4.3 meters, you would be 60 centimeters above that water level in that specific flood event. However, if you jump across to 1% flood event, you would obviously be in a lot more water. And again, you go to February this year, you'd be in even more water. What this information shows me, and again, it's really high level crude. You've got to understand it's done through computer modeling across the entire city. It's not accurate, 100% accurate information. There's no way council can put the come up with that information. They can't put that amount of resources into this sort of stuff. But in theory, this property in February this year, the water lapped within 10 centimeters of the existing house floor level. So you love that information. Now, when I first looked at this, I came down here and went, okay, we've got different colors for different types of flood events. Does that mean if I've got a property that's affected by Creek and Waterway, Storm Tide and Brisbane River, that I'm gonna see a beautiful rainbow unfold in front of me? Beautiful. Don't know if people who had flood affected properties that were affected by that many sources of flooding would call it beautiful. You get where I'm trying to go here. But essentially I thought, okay, so if I had one of these properties, I'd see all these multicolors going across. What I've since worked out is no, they only showed the highest level of flooding. So in this instance, yes, and I do know this property has multiple sources of flooding. In this instance, the creek and waterway is the highest source. So that is what I see the levels are showing in front of me. Now, 
scroll down next thing in terms of adding another layer of information to what we have access to is you have this greeny aqua colored mapping system this shows all of the different overlay or all the different water sources and types of flooding merged together should say shouldn't say all actually i should probably clarify like the previous floodwise property report we don't have access or it doesn't include the mapped overland flow data council simply doesn't have the resources to come up with that type of information because there is so many mapped overland flow paths across the city so yeah we still only cover creek and waterway brisbane river and storm tide but this image here brings those different mapping sources together and shows the overall impact from all of the different flood types in one image which i thought was pretty cool but if you keep scrolling down we get this and i looked at this and went oh data mm, me like it we got information like the 0.2 percent level we got the breakdown of the different numbers for the different uh, water sources like i said just a next level or even higher level of data and information to allow us to make the informed better informed decisions which again is exactly what council's trying to achieve here to arm people with more information um i think that covers off everything i want to talk about there is a lot of information that council's publishing at the moment so if you just go to google or go to brisbane city council's website type in floodwise property report you'll see videos you'll see information sheets everything there i personally haven't had a chance to go through it all yet i will start working my way through it but i'd strongly encourage you guys to get on there start working your way around there understand what information you now have access to because i think this is a gold mine already and i think it's going to become an even bigger gold mine once we process that information and understand truly what we have at our fingertips here okay i think that covers off everything i want to talk about today as i always say until next time thanks for watching for all you red tape lovers out there, I have one thing to say. Well, no, actually, I've got three. Number one, the advice provided in these videos is general in nature. It's not site specific. You would be a silly billy to go and make financial decisions based on this advice without first checking with the town planner. Don't be a silly billy. Number two, Brisbane Town Planning is in no way linked to Brisbane City Council. The views expressed in these videos are my own, not council's. So if you don't like them, blame me, not council. Number three, what was my number three? Oh yeah, the views expressed in these videos are accurate at the time of recording. If you're watching this video back 10 years from now, the views may not be so accurate. That's all. Bye.